Hello everyone. Uh, the other day I saw a video by Dylan Johnson talking about what his base trailing season looked like and I thought, being that it was such a good video, uh, I thought I would um, share mine as well, uh, being that you know knowledge is power and the insight could help you and give you more context. So first of all, I had probably like the worst start to a base training season that I've ever had. Um, I've been ill in base season before, but never had the virus. Um, so the first period of my base season was completely written off, like the first six weeks. So everything had to get pushed down quite a bit. Um, so I didn't really start training until I think it was like the end of December, early January. And by that time, my FTP was around the 310 to 320 mark. At the minute, it's now, well, it's March the 29th. My FTP now stands at 352, which is uh, the lowest it's ever been at this time of year. Uh, and I've been training for almost 10 years with a power meter. My highest FTP, ironically, came in August and September last year, where my FTP was modeled to be in the high 380s. That was at 60 kilos. My CTL fitness number was, I think, 35 when I managed to get myself back on the bike in early January. And right now it stands at 104. My season is not as black and white as it used to be where you start road racing and you don't really do anything else between the months, months of March and September. Now with hill climbing as my main season, which doesn't come until uh, October, um, I can be a little bit more free spirited with the way I train with base training. That doesn't mean that I follow the traditional way. I partake in Zwift racing and I enjoy it and the Zwift racing league and stuff like that I get quite involved in. So I need to have a little dabble of intensity here and there during this base training period. And what I undertook was still very much like what you'd call polarized. I was spending probably around 85% of my time anywhere between the classic like zone one and lower zone three of the six zone power training zones. Um, and then the rest of the time I was either just doing a couple of really short, sharp efforts. Uh, some of the intensity was taken up by doing FTP tests and uh, power, short power tests. So there wasn't really any kind of structured uh, intensity. Uh, it more came from, um, yeah, testing and stuff like that. What I would say though is that I've given myself a lot of time to train. Like as Dylan says in his video, like he's able to do, he's able to knock out 30 hour weeks, 20 hour weeks at least uh, on a regular basis. You often see on his Strava doing six hour plus rides. Um, I somewhat don't have the time to do that. Uh, I probably could, but it would sacrifice what I'd like to do in other areas, like make as many videos as I do. And also I did Hold Root on Zwift, the three day race, which was a ton of intensity. For me, in my opinion, long one of the days where you just do zone one, zone two, lower zone three for the whole of your base period. Like unless you, ha unless you have intensity in that in some form or another, like I think you're missing out. Um, but it doesn't have to, it doesn't have to be a full on interval session. It can just be like a couple of sprints on a group, right? Like it, it just needs something. Okay. Now let's get into the weeds a little bit. So what you're probably going to see from my training plan is that there never really is a, or what doesn't look like an actual structure. The best plans can be made and then something gets in the way of them. And this first month of me getting back into training, which was in January, I started off with a 10 hour week and then I started off with a 13 hour week and then a 10 hour week and a 10 hour week and the final week of January was a 17 hour week. Now, for the most part, these weeks are pretty easy. And this is the thing, I was coming back from illness, I was testing the waters, I didn't really know, can I push it? I was doing around 600 TSS for these kind of 13, 10 to 13 hour weeks. 
which isn't crazy. More intensity than I probably wanted to because I was taking WTRL sessions on a Saturday uh, and I was taking uh, part in the racing league on a Tuesday night. So there was two Zwift races technically uh, a week. Um, so the other days had to be like fairly chill. Um, otherwise I'd just be like, what is this? So as you can see, January was a bit of a shambles. However, I did a test at the end of January where I got a new FTP, or an updated FTP rather, of 333 watts. So I'd gone from a modeled FTP of around 310 to now 333, which then equaled my lowest ever FTP on record. At this moment in time, my CTL sat at 80, which like was a pretty good increase. But what happens in February is that that 80 turns to like 90 and there's a very little increase in CTL over that month. However, those of you that were following the journey, you would have known that my FTP still kept increasing. For the first half of February, I ticked over. I did, again, uh, a 10 hour week and went straight into, in the middle of February, a 12 day training camp. I accumulated 42 hours of training in 11 days. This was the biggest, this had the biggest influence on my uh, CTL. Uh, it also had a big influence in how I felt uh, directly after the camp and getting towards the end of it. I was feeling very good. And a lot of the riding during this 12 day period was basically endurance nothing else. So actually after that big block, I took I took a week of deloading, but not completely resting. And then we went into a couple of weekends where it just went back to back uh, virtual racing. We had uh, Road Grand Tours, five day, four day stage race, um, where I was racing every evening for an hour. Uh, we also had the Holt Route on Zwift, which actually ended up setting a new uh, FTP at, which went from 333 to then 350, which is kind of where it stayed for the last month now. So during March, we fly through the, uh, the racing blocks. I am getting a bit tired now with that. I then go into a baseline test, uh, an FTP test to try and see if there's any change anywhere that I need to be aware of. There wasn't, um, but what was pretty cool to see was even though I wasn't directly training my one and three minute power, um, just as a small insight, the British Hill Climb Championships that I'm training for in October uh, are on like a three minute climb roughly. So I need to keep my hand in with those efforts regardless of the time of year. So me doing these one and three minute efforts off the back of no intervals targeting them at all, uh, we actually did the first lot in the middle of February, and then I retested those uh, on a standard ride in the middle of March. Um, there was a same, I think it was an increase of three watts on the one minute power, so it went up to like 606 watts, which is just over 10 watts per kilo for a minute. And my three minute power went up from uh, 444, to 470 for the three minutes. So pretty significant jump in just a space of a month with like very little structure in terms of focusing on those. So that is great news. And as you would have seen very recently, and it's kind of why I wanted to make this video, I know Dylan had, uh, had jumped into it a little bit, talking about base and endurance and everything else, is I've just got done with a 300K ride, which you may have seen, I'll put the link up here. Um, but yeah, like that was doing that ride and doing the Everesting ride that I did or the 10,000 meters climbing ride that I did was another little extra kind of test and a cherry on top in terms of getting a lot of time in at a very low intensity. Hold up. Edit Ed here. Edited. Anyway, I'm watching it back as I'm editing this and I need to just like clarify a couple of things. Um, I haven't actually finished base training. I've actually extended base training by a week or two. And the reason why I've done that is because I found out just a couple of days ago, this was after I'd actually filmed this segment of the video, 
that the big 600k event that I was training for um, is now cancelled for obvious reasons. Um, so that's not happening. Now my first event technically in the calendar is at the end of May. Uh, it's the Struggle Deals event uh, up in Yorkshire. Now, yeah, like that, the minute is going ahead, but I actually don't know. The minute, like this week, this is technically, I think, my last week, maybe my last week of base training before I go into a rest week uh, and a test week. Um, but this week has been really good. Um, I've actually done, I've actually done a few videos, like the last few days where I've um, been vlogging what I've been doing. Um, so lots of endurance, lots of just steady away riding. And I've also done a bunch of like 3015s and 3030s uh, just to keep myself sharp. So um, it's gone really, really well. At the minute, what I'm technically training for, and I need to make a proper video about this, about my plans for this year, because it, it, it means that you all know what's happening and it keeps me accountable. I'm still training for the Marmot. Alps and the Alpe d'Huez hill climb which is right at the end of June but again speculation as to whether or not that's going to happen or whether we're even going to be able to travel there so keep that in mind while you're watching right back to the video my FTP gain is uh, first of all it was modeled by WKO and second of all I felt the sensations come in like I knew I was coming into good form a good fitness rather um, when I was doing those big blocks uh, particularly after the training camp the DIY training camp and I knew it was coming so I wouldn't have tested as often as I tested unless I knew something was up and I never really fully trust what's modeled I always try and back it up with a session to, to try and determine if it's true or false we'll call it base three like the final the final saga in March, uh, after coming off the little block of racing, the virtual racing, uh, I went into a 21 hour week where I did 850 TSS. I went into a 17 hour week with 900 TSS. And then I went into uh, what's just gone, a 21 hour week with 980 TSS. Um, and that's taken me up to 100 fitness, 100 CTL. But what some of you may have seen, like with a session I did on uh, Monday, I did a really good session on Monday where I actually uh, got done with my 20 minute FTP test, uh, straight into uh, four by 10 minutes at sweet spot with tempo, 30 minutes straight with some uh, surges, basically every two minutes. Uh, and that was here in that two hour period, you know, including the FTP test and everything, um, I cleared 150 TSS, a 300 watt normalized power, which was 0.85 intensity factor, and my heart rate only averaged 140 a bit per minute. Uh, and so, to me, it's another sign that things just keep climbing and climbing and climbing. And, you know, to be brutally honest, I've substituted during this period of time, like really long rides with slightly shorter rides with a bit more intensity. And sometimes, like I said, you've got to be like, you've got to be adaptive. So I do get this question quite a lot, but during this period of time, over the base period, I've done no weight training, nothing like that that's been following a structure. I usually just kind of do whatever I think is fun and I can enjoy doing like bodyweight exercises, leaping, jumping, bounding, um, good for your bone health and everything else, but nothing structured. Just do what you want to do. But for me, I've just trying. I've just been trying to get what I can out of this period of time. Like what, like what can I get out of my week? What can I salvage if something goes wrong and something gets in the way? What can I then salvage from that week? You know, if that means dropping uh, threshold intervals and replace them with tempo intervals, and I go for a longer ride, then so be it. So it's it's like a constant process of tweaking and adjusting. You know, the best, like I said, the best plan is not the one that you fill in and it's there for like six weeks in advance and then you don't stick to it. It's the one that, you know, although it seems annoying, but like I rarely ever have green days on training peaks, to be honest, because I'm constantly changing things around and making things fit and suit. It's frustrating, but it still works. That's, that's how adaptive training works, you know? So 
that's my base period. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you haven't watched Dylan's video as well, that's a pretty insightful one. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching.